I just wanted to say hi to the readers of Sci-Fi World and uh, go check out Mandy. Thank you. Okay. As we told you, we just saw the film. Yeah. Half hour. We, we have it really fresh, no? <laughs> but uh, what was the... What did you expect of the audience when, at the moment to see the, to make the film? I mean, of course, do you have to do very clear ideas, no? But I mean, what do you the the, the response that do you expect from the audience once the film is, is done? I, I expect nothing, to be honest with you. I, I make these films for myself and kind of for my small core group of friends. What we what, you know what we like and what we're interested in, and uh, and I, I hope that other people will like will enjoy it. But honestly, I, 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 cause I'm, a, I'm a kind of, I'm a pessimist. I expect dead silence and for people to like leave a theater. <laughs> the thing is because that's what, that's what's my sensation. That you make, what, what, what do you want? You right. don't expect analysis. Right. So I, I, I need to, to check that. <laughs> Did you clarify that for me? Okay. okay. And, uh, at, from the very first beginning of the film, I I, I noticed that uh, every single character in the film has a huge interior life. I mean, there is, sometimes it's more that do you see in his eyes that, that what they say or what they do. No, yeah, yeah. this was uh, your, your your first or your main idea, or it came uh, with the, with the work of the actors. Well, I mean. I, you know, I, I try to make. I, I, my my thought is to to make films that that are that take place in these fantastical realms, but the, the people who inhabit these realms are are very uh, neurotic, emotional people. You know, uh, they're not. They're, they don't know what they what, what's what's going to happen. They're not. They're not confident about about their success. You know, so maybe that's that's part of that. Um, I feel like I, I lost track of the question. Uh, uh, the interior life of the characters. Yeah. All, all of them have, yeah. I mean, have a, a lot of life inside. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, specifically with Mandy, it was very important to me that, you know, because the film in a way is about the absence, the absence of, some, of somebody that can, never, that can never be brought back, you know, and I, I really wanted her to be somebody that, that, you would, that the audience would miss, you know, uh, that, that I would miss uh, if they were gone, you know, somebody that, 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 that is imaginative and, 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 and uh, you know, thoughtful, you know. And one of the things that I feel to felt, I think, uh, I'm sorry, is when you started to, to think in this movie, I mean, uh, for sure it, would, it was, has in your mind a lot of years, a lot of time, until finally came out, no? But in my opinion, tell me if I am wrong, that uh, perhaps you work at the first moment with images, and after that with the story, is right. that possible? Uh, it, it, I, I would describe the way that I made these two films as a sort of iterative, almost sculptural process, where I start with a sort of core th thought, and then I start building out from there. I start uh, compiling images and sounds, and, and sort of then eventually scenes start to come and characters start to come. So it, for me, it, when I'm writing these things, or sort of, I don't even think of it as writing initially. It's more like an iterative, almost sculptural process. Of trying to sort of build this this object, work with with, with feelings, with sensations. Yeah, is the main thing, no? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And talking about the, the we are in fantastic film festival in yeah. general, no? Yeah. So the two main characters, uh, the characters of Nicolas Cage and Mandy, at the beginning they started to talk with planets. Mm -hmm. ah, I was reading a book about planets. Since that moment, I don't know why I felt that they were talking about the Earth that is not his own planet. And at the end of the film, I saw two planets. This is not Earth. No. What, what can you tell me about that? Well, I love that interpretation. <laughs> Honestly, with this film and Black Rainbow, I, you know, there's certain th certain details or connections that I leave un unconnected because I prefer in a film to be able to sort of fill in the blanks myself or to allow the people watching to sort of uh, project their own feelings and emotions onto it, especially with Black Rambo, which I almost thought of as like a Rorschach test where you would project your own 
perceptions and, and emotions and experiences onto it, and that's what really gives it life, which might explain why that film was met with such a stony, uh, deafening silence. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> What? How about talking about this? To go back to your original uh, about question. I don't know why I have a lot of type, very uh, strong presence of Mad Max. I don't know why. Mm, yeah. Because the, 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 I mean, Mad Max. The, loss, the, the yeah. revenge. Ma- Mad Max, I feel, is like deeply ingrained in me. I, I had a Mad Max 2. Uh, I had a Beta Max tape of Mad Max 2 Road Warrior that mm. uh, we taped off of the cable. That I probably watched a thousand times in my and when I was a kid. I I, I, I don't. I, there's, it's not possible I've seen any film more times than that Betamax tape of, of Road Warrior. So I feel like it's deeply, you know, embedded in me mm-hmm. <laughs> and in like every thought. I can tell because yeah. that, 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 the, the, the motorcycles, the guys, uh, yeah. the stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's one of my sensations. Yeah. But not not in a first a first saw first sight. No, yeah. you just. Uh, yeah. Around uh, yeah. that smell of the Mad Max was there. Yeah, it's, what, it's, it's my, in my me. Sensation. But you know, uh, I wasn't trying to uh, uh, ape Mad Max. You know, but talking about that, what do you think about the last one for the Mad Max? I think it's a flawless masterpiece. I, I think it's incredible. I, agree. I, agree. I just watched the the uh, black and chrome mm-hmm. version the other day, and it's stunning. Amazing. So, going back to the, your film. Uh, Genemaya. Yeah. One of my questions, as you see, I am not uh, writing the, the paper. I, I pretend that this is just a, a conversation about your film, no? So, but one of the most strongest things is the, the Genemaya, no? The Genemaya character. No? Yeah, yeah. If I ask you, uh, there is something of you in the film? In Jeremiah? Not Jeremiah or in the, <laughs> in the film. Yeah, I think I'm in the film for sure. I think, uh, you know, if anything, I'm, I'm a little bit, there's a little bit of Red Miller in me. I think there's probably, whether we want to admit it or not, a little bit of Jeremiah in all of us. But uh, I'm very interested in the uh, in the sort of uh, machinations of, uh, of egoism, you know, and, and uh, delusional, uh, delusions of grandeur are, I think, one of the funniest things in the entire world. Somebody who, who thinks of himself as a superior to everybody else. So I think that makes an ideal villain, you know? <laughs> because it's terrifying because he's so close. He's yeah. From all of us, he's around. He's yeah, yeah. And I mean, guys like Jeremiah, I see them in, 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 in the Pacific Northwest. Every time I go to the grocery store, I see like three of them, three Jeremiahs. <laughs> <laughs> Just three. Just, Just three. There have to be yeah. another more. Yeah. Uh, about the music score, mm-hmm. uh, why you choose Starless on the Bible for the beginning? This shot is amazing. Uh, I, well, I spent years searching for the song, and I had like a hundred options. And then my wife played me Starless, and I, I immediately realized that was the right song, like the way it sounds, the thematics, what I, the way I interpret the lyrics, that it was the perfect song. And related again with the music score, uh, you were the last one who can work with Johan. Johan. Right, yeah. Uh, this was... Uh, he, he made this for a long time ago, or he was working with you at the same time? Uh, we were working on it throughout the entire... I mean, he started putting together sketches while we were shooting, and then um, throughout the entire editing process, you know, he was working, and he was liter- He was sending us uh, stems till the last day of mixing. He was producing so much material, uh, and I really feel like we, even then we were just sort of starting to scratch the, the tip of the iceberg of what we could have done together, and I really, really wish that we could have, could have gone on to do another one and that he's still around. It's really sad. Yeah. We don't have more time, sorry, but really nice. Really nice. Thanks. Great to talk to you, man. Pleasure.